All right, we're going to talk about the uh, John Deere Seed Star with the XP monitoring in it. The one we're looking at right here is actually an XP with the active downforce. There's two versions of the XP monitoring. One is going to be with that active, and the other one won't have the active downforce. The active downforce, what that's going to do is it's basically on our gauge wheels right here. We've got a sensor in there, and it's trying to maintain to where it's carrying X amount of downforce on that wheel itself to help us firm, you know, uh, firm up our seed trench. On the other ones, without the active downforce, is all we're doing is we're maintaining X amount of pounds of downforce on that row unit itself to get it to, to perform and firm that trench the way we want. So with that, we'll get talking about the XP just a little bit. One thing, this is going to be done, this is being done off of a simulator. It's probably the best way we could come up with to, to show you the different things on an XP. Some of the screens on this might be just a little bit different than what your planner is, if you've got a, an earlier planner. And that's basically because of software changes that have happened in the controllers on the planner itself. It's something that can be updated on the planner. If you wish, if you so desire, we can put updates into them to get them to where they look like this screen here as long as you have all the equipment on that planner, you know, for say the active downforce. At any rate, with that we'll get started. XP is basically all down for the most part in the lower left hand corner over here. We've got our target pressure right up on top here. This one here, we'll just go ahead and put a check into the active downforce here. At any rate, right here we've got downforce pressure. And I can bump this up or down with these keys or otherwise I can go in here and set how much pressure I want to put in there. I'll just leave it where it was at and accept. So at any rate, that's kind of how we are, we're going to set our pressures. And whether we've got the active or just downforce on the row unit itself, you know, done the same. So we'll just hit our accept key. This one here, you're going to see, this is that active downforce and it's got an icon here and it's also got it up here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we'll start off with this top left icon here down in the bottom. And what that is is just our normal seed star page that we're going to see with our population up here. You know, we've got 32.3 in there is what we're running, and that's basically what this line is simulating. Okay, next one we've got is, is our doubles in here. And we can start looking. We've got a line in here to where that's, you know, an acceptable level of what we're setting the planner at and we'll get alarms if we start going above and beyond this. It's the alarms on this are going to be just like what you've seen on the seed star before. You know, seed star normally going through the field, we're going to see just one that's maybe bumping a little up and another one down just a little and some other up and down. When they start getting way off of that center line, and like I say, this center line on this one, target pressure right here with our little target symbol, that's simulating 32,300 on this line. So basically, if we get close to where our high-low limits are set, that's when we, with this line, instead of being a little black line, is going to turn to an orange color. And if we get way beyond that, then it's going to turn to a red. And that's basically the setting of those alarms. You know, you've got it on your, basically in your population page. You've got your high and low limits right there and a target limit. Same thing we've got on an XP. You know, we've got our high and low limits in there. So at any rate, we'll move on down. We've got our, our doubles page. We've got our spacing page. Over here, we've got a toggle button. And we can push, push it to toggle in between the different screens, or I can come down here and start looking at them individually. One thing I should be able to do on this simulator, you can do it on your planner, but normally, right on this button here, this toggle button, if I push on that and hold that for about 10 seconds, it's going to bring up a page, and in there, you can determine, do you want it to auto-scroll through how many different pages? You select the pages you want it to scroll through, and then you also put a check mark in there if you want it to auto-scroll. And I'm sorry I can't get that to work on the simulator today, but it will work on your planner. Okay, and then now we get down to the bottom row over here. Here's our downforce per row. You know how much force that, that those sensors are feeling. If, you know, we, if we've got the active, um, 
next one here is ride quality. Next one here would be uh, details about the row. In there I can toggle and go on through the different rows or I can go ahead and type row number nine in there and keep an eye on that one, see what's going on with it. It's going to give me my population, it's going to give me my percentage of singles, doubles, things like that, you know, our spacing, all the data that we want to see. Um, next one down here is just basically the average, what that whole planner is doing on an average over the, over the board of what we've got going on. Okay, like I say, in here is where we could set to cycle in between those pages, and I can't get that to work on here today. But what I want to talk about to get into, you know, basically, I guess where we want to start with is, is on the XP monitoring. I'm sure you guys have all run combines that have a grain loss monitor in there. Grain loss monitor, this XP monitor is kind of based along the same lines. What we need to do with a combine is we go out there and we get it set to where it's at an acceptable level of loss. It's looking good out there. Okay, now I go in there and I have to set my alarm to where if it starts pushing corn out the back, it's going to let me know. Or if I'm not running up to full capacity, it'll let me know. Well, the same thing on the XP monitor. And basically that's all going to be done on, a, on an alarms page. To get that alarms page to come up, any one of these XP keys here. If I push and hold this, that was the row unit. If I push and hold this for about five seconds, we'll get that alarms page to come up. And there we go. Okay, singulation. I just basically, you know, that, that line we were looking at, you know, the higher we put this number on singulation, the harder it is to keep that alarm from coming on. So say if I'd put that up at 100%, you're probably going to have it going all the time. If I put it down at 80% or 50%, then it's not going to come on for me. So basically, like I say, you're going to go out and you're going to drive that planner. It's working at an, at an acceptable level. You're going to come in here and then tweak these numbers up or down to get that alarm to come off on that page the way you want. Okay, same thing with uh, seed spacing here, only instead of putting a higher number in there, we're going to put a lower number. Ride quality, you know, like I say, we get it set to where that, that row unit's looking nice and smooth going across the field. It's an acceptable level. We'll just go ahead and bump this alarm to where it just starts coming on for me. Maybe it's at 95% is where it starts. Or maybe it's at 80% is where I see that alarm start coming on. But you're going to come in here and set these alarms to where if I push the, push the extreme a little bit that it's going to come on. So in here, we've got a step value. That's where on that main page where I was going to set my target pressure. That's how much every time I push the up or the down key, how much it's going to raise that pressure. Okay, we've got a PDF low pressure alarm here. And that's something we want to have in there. And I would probably put it at, say, about 65 pounds. What that's going to do is if the air pressure in our tank and our lines gets down below 65, it's going to give us a warning. Okay, right here, guys, is our target margin. That is how much weight we want to have on that row unit on the gauge wheels for, 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 for forming our trench. Okay, the one thing, <clears throat> you know, when we've got the XP active downforce, like I say, it's looking at that gauge wheel. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to get that to where we're forming a trench like what we want to see. Then what we're going to do, we're going to get back in that planner, we're going to drive across the field, and we're going to look at tab G over here. We're going to go in there. We're going to go into the sensors tab here, and we're going to go into the downforce right in here. We can see the sensors, and we can see how much each one of those sensors is carrying for a load. We want to take that number and average it out, and you're going to see a big variation in there. You know, you might see 100 pounds on one section of the planner. You might see 190 on another section. But basically what you're going to do is you're going to take an average of those numbers. You're going to come back in here into my alarms page. And that's what we're going to put in here on this target margin. 
Okay, one thing I want to mention on target margin here, we've got a high limit and we've got a low limit. So what we can do in there, normally when we put a number in here, it's going to default automatically on this high margin and this low margin. It's going to put numbers in there for us. And it's going to be on our high margin, it's going to be 75% more than where our target margin was. And on our low margin, it's going to be 50% less than that. But that is something, it's just default numbers it puts in there. If I want to, I can go in there and change that number. So now I'm just going to go back to my run page and we're on our downforce page here now. One thing on downforce, remember it's just like when we were on seeds per acre here. This is our 32.3 line. When we get to our margin page for our downforce, same thing. That number that we're putting in there for our target margin is this right here. So one thing, maybe you've got a target margin in there, but I'm seeing something just like I've got right here. The lines are always on all sensors going up above. I rarely to never see anything down below. That means we don't have this target margin set right. So it's just a good, a good eye or a good way to tell if you did get that average number right in there. So at any rate, we'll go in here and if we're seeing it always go up above, we'd go back in there to our, our target margin and raise that up a little bit if we're always seeing it hitting the upper extreme. So, like I say, just, just one thing I wanted to mention on this alarms page, you know, is, is that's what we've got to do to get it set and working properly. So, um, if, you know, it's, it's the same thing on any of these pages. If we're seeing the alarm go one way all the time and not the other, we basically have to tweak that, that baseline, the center line here. We've got to change that to get it to where we're seeing it going a little sometimes below, sometimes above, and then you can set the sensitivity of what it's going to take to make it go off. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention here on the active downforce. We've got a check mark in here, and that's basically turning the active downforce off, and that's pretty much now just like what you're going to have if you were running without that active downforce. It's going to maintain X amount of pounds of downforce on that row unit. One thing I want you to notice when we click this active downforce on, we've got a little button up here. Basically what this is for is I'm going through the field and I've got maybe a bottom that's a little wet and I don't want quite the downforce on there. I don't want it to start pushing and trying to put more. I, I actually want it a little less. What this is going to do is just pause. If you look, we've got a countdown on there now. So it just put this active downforce into a hold for 15 seconds for us. So. And with that, guys, I think that's about the extent of the, the uh, XP monitoring. Like I say, the biggest thing to remember is it's a couple things to remember. One is it's kind of like a combine. You've got to have something working good first. And then we go in on our alarms page, and we're going to tweak these numbers to where that alarm is working the way that that I want it to work. So just keep that in mind that we're looking at, you know, these here, especially like this target margin for weight, that's basically that baseline, that center line on that upper part of the page where the graphs are. That's what we're adjusting, you know. So if you got any more questions on XP, make sure you get a hold of us and we'll try to get them answered for you. Thank you.